a guitar player, I really suggest picking up a mandolin. It's a great instrument. It's a lot of fun to play. Every time I pick up a mandolin in a, in a live situation or in a studio situation, everybody's like, oh man, that's so beautiful. I mean, a lot of times it's because I'm just doing some... In, in the studio scene, uh, when you have multiple instruments, when you have a second instrument, you can play a guitar and a mandolin. Um, it's called having a double. So it pays a little extra. It doesn't pay double, unfortunately, but it does pay a little bit extra if you pick up a different instrument. So in my world, it's really uh, kind of beneficial to have as many instruments that you can kind of at least read on. In this video, I'm going to talk about the ergonomics of playing a mandolin as a guitar player, and I'm going to talk to you about the tuning. Some I'm going to show you some chords and I'm going to show you some scales, some real practical scales. And if this video does well, then I'll do a follow-up video where I go into a little deeper and show you a bunch of chords and a bunch of scales, okay? But for now, it's going to be more of a kind of a intro to mandolin for guitar players. Let's get started. Okay, you'll notice that I'm sitting down, but I'm using a strap. Well, if I wasn't using a strap, the mandolin is such a small instrument that I would, it would, I would be kind of leaning, hunching over it and everything. And I feel like, for me, it's a lot easier to record and to play if I'm uh, wearing a strap and I have it set at a reasonable height. Um, it's, it's a lot smaller than the, the guitar. The neck is a lot smaller. It's eight strings, but it's four pairs of strings. So it's, it's, you're pushing down two strings at a time, kind of like a 12 string, <laughs> but the neck is a lot narrower. This neck is one and one eighths of an inch wide at the nut. It gets a little wider as it goes, um, but you'll, you'll find that it's, it gets a little crowded. And especially if you have big hands like me, especially as you get further up the fretboard, it's really tight. Most of the time I'm playing here in the lower seven fret, so it's not really too much of an issue. One thing I've noticed as well is that you know, this neck isn't too bad, but it's most of the necks tend to have a little bit of a V-shape. And if I'm playing a lot of mandolin, I tend to get a little like sore right here on the meat of my thumb or even a little bit bruised, um, probably because I'm pushing too hard. Um, but you'll notice I bring my thumb over. It's not an issue so much when I'm playing simple open chords. And I'm going to show you a few chords so you can kind of get started on it. I'm going to show you a trick. Okay, so stay tuned for the trick. The tuning of a mandolin is just like a violin. It's tuned in fifths, G, D, A, and E. And the strings are tuned in unison. So there's no octaves here, it's just two unison Gs, two unison Ds, two unison As, and two unison Es. Now you could tune it like a guitar. If you want to, you'd have to get different strings. Um, some Session musicians do that so they can read. I generally can read fine on mandolin. It takes me maybe a couple minutes to reset my brain if I have a bunch of music in front of me. I kind of once I get going, I'm fine. Um, so there, but there are there are some guitar players that have mandolins tuned like a guitar. I actually have a guitar mandolin that's a 12 string mandolin and it's tuned like a guitar but up an octave. Um, and it's fine. I never use it though because to me it doesn't really sound like a mandolin. It sounds very different. And there's certain things about this tuning that are going to really make sense once you start playing with it. For one thing, having a tuning like this without any kind of aberration, like a, a guitar tuning has a fourth and then a third in there, the mandolin tuning is pure fifths, so it's very symmetrical. So as you learn scales and as you learn chords, you start to see a lot more patterns develop that make more sense than they would on guitar. Okay, learning chords on the mandolin, I'm gonna show you a trick. And when I learned this, when I actually, I figured this out on my own, I was like, oh, wait a minute. The mandolin is just the bottom four strings of a guitar upside down. Okay, let me say that again. The mandolin is the bottom four strings of your guitar upside down, all right? So if you think about the, you know, I always say eat at Denny's, get bad eggs. If I go from top, uh, from the top down, I get eat at Denny's get. E-A-D-G. Okay, so now just imagine yourself, imagine yourself playing a G chord on the guitar. 
All right, look at the bottom four strings, flip them upside down, and you get this. This shape, zero, zero, two, three. That's a G chord. In fact, the beauty of this G chord is it's got a G on the bottom and a G on top. Now imagine yourself playing a C chord, just a standard open C chord. And you, you know, like you would generally not play the bottom string. Okay, that low E string, you would start at the fifth string, which would be the C note. So you'd be the third fret, second fret, open, first fret, open. The C, standard basic C chord. Well, if you look at the bottom four strings and turn it upside down, it would look like this. And you do play the E string. You do play the top string on this because that technically on a C, when you play a C chord on the guitar, that low E string is in the chord. But if you play it, it would be a C over E chord because that, that, ba that would be a bass note. It would be below everything. Now, this is technically a C over G. But the mandolin is such a high instrument um, that you don't really need to worry too much about what note is in the bass like you do with guitar. So the way I'm playing the C chord is open, two, three, and open, or you can play open, two, three, three. And a lot of mandolin players will play five, two, three, open, so they can have that C in the bottom. All right? All right, now, imagine yourself playing a D chord. All right, so well, a D chord is primarily, it populates the top four strings of the guitar, and so really we'd only have two strings involved here, but, if you did a D over F sharp, you know, some people bring their, their thumb over, uh, over the neck to get that F sharp. If you do that, um, then if you imagine those bottom four strings, flip them upside down and look, at, look and behold, two, zero, two, zero. That's basically a D over A. But you don't, again, you can just call it a D chord. You don't need to worry about the, the uh, bass note because, the, again, the mandolin is up here with the violin range. And if you, uh, you've heard of a mandola, a mandola has the same tuning as a viola, and a mandocello has the same tuning as a cello. Um, so this is a mandolin, sounds like violin, and it's tuned like a violin. Okay, um, imagine an E minor chord. I'm just gonna show you a few chords. You can take this to another level, and I'm gonna talk about bar chords in a little bit. E minor, the bot, it's just the open two, two, zero, zero, zero. So if you just flip that upside down, it pretty much is like this. Now, and that's not a bad E minor. I might do, I might add the G on top. I might play that. So, but this way is zero, two, two, zero. This way, it's a little crowded for me. So I might bar and go zero, two, two, three. And I got a G on top. And if I want the, the second, I get that beautiful second in that minor chord, which is so nice. Um, anyway, so that's, so that's four chords you can start with to kind of get going. And like I said, if you just take any of the chords that you normally play and, and take the bottom four strings and flip them over, you know, imagine, or you don't have to imagine, you can make charts or whatever. Um, you can learn all the chords you have on guitar, you could feasibly play on the mandolin. Some scales now. Um, I'm going to show you just. I'm going to show you all G scales, um, and then in a future video, I'll show you different. Maybe uh, we'll do some uh, C scales and D scales and A scales. Uh, kind of, kind of to be able to kind of jam a little bit over bluegrass or country songs, which is generally when you use the mandolin. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with a G major pentatonic. The notes in a G major pentatonic are G, A, B, D, and E. Just five notes. That's why it's called a pentatonic. And it's fairly simple. And again, you'll start to see some symmetry on the mandolin as you play it. Um, I'm going to show you a really cool trick at the end of this video that like, oh man, I wish I could do that on guitar. Okay, but here we go. So here's a G major pentatonic. Open on the bottom string. Then second fret, little out tune, there we go. Fourth fret, open, second, fifth. Then open, second, fifth, open, third. And then we can keep going if we want, we can go up to five and seven. But that, that right there on the first two strings is the first octave. So we have, 
G, A, B, D, E, and G. One, I'm sorry, open, two, four, open, two, five. Okay, and then from there, we can go to this G. We have five, open, two, five, open, and then three, and if I want, I can go three, five, seven. Um, but if I stay on the G, if I go to the G, uh, that's the first octave, and those notes would be G, again, same thing as before, G, A, B, D, E, and G. All right, now, if we want to make that a little bit more bluesy, and therefore a little bit more bluegrassy, bluesy grassy, I don't know, how would you, bluesy, blues grassy, I don't know. Um, you can add the flat three in there, which would be a B flat, okay? So check this out. I'm just gonna add one note every octave. We have the open G, A, B flat to B. And then we just finish off the scale the rest of the way. Open, two, and five. And I'm probably gonna play the next segment. I'm gonna play five, open, one with my first finger and then slide it up and play two with my first finger. You could use your second finger. That's not really a problem at all. But your next note's gonna be up here at the fifth fret. So you might, you might wanna slide up your first finger like this to get that. So it'd be five and then open, one, two, five, and then open, three. So it sounds like this, the G major blue pent the G major blues pentatonic. <laughs> it's always fun to have that flat third in there to do kind of bluesy licks. Okay, now I want to show you just a simple G major scale. So G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. Now here's the first part. Open, two, four, five. Open, two, four, five. Again, open, two, four, five. Open, two, four, five. That's G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. And then from there we have five with our, our pinky up here on the fifth fret of the second string. And open, two, three, five. Open, two, three. Okay, again, five. Open, two, three, five. Open, two, three. Descending, G, F sharp, E, D, C, B, A, G. F sharp, E, D, C, B, A, G. And again, you can continue up if you want. Oops. Hit that A and B up there if you want. But just play around with it. You'll find all sorts of little mini melodies in it all over the instrument. It's a lot of fun. Okay, the next scale I'm gonna show you is the G Mixolydian. So it's the exact same scale, but we're gonna take that seventh note, that F sharp, and we're gonna lower it a fret or flatten it and make it an F natural. Okay, so that sounds like this. Really good sounding scale for blues and for bluegrass and country. So we have open, so it's G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, not F sharp, F, G. Okay, here we go. G, so open, two, four, five, open, two, three, five. Okay, one more time, open, two, four, five, open, two, three, five. And then from there, five, open, two, three, five, open, one, three. There's that F natural there. All right, so that's a, that's a really fun scale to play over, like I said, over kind of a G jam or something like that. You can, over, you can play that scale, it sounds great over C, even though it sounds good over the D chord. You can add that flat third in there if you want to. 
Um, now I'm going to show you the G minor pentatonic. And it's, so G minor pentatonic is uh, basically a root, a flat three, a four, a five, a seven, or a flat seven, and a root. So we're going to have G, B flat, C, D, F, and G. So we have G, and then we're going to go third fret, B flat, fifth fret, we're going to have a C, then, then the open D string, and then the third fret is the F, and then the G. And this is like, you can jam on this, this scale all day long. It's great, you know, it just feels great. Feel, I mean, it doesn't feel that much different than guitar. Your brain has to get used to it, but basically, it just feels like you're playing a guitar scale. Okay, now starting from that G note there, we're gonna continue G, and then we're not gonna have play the next string open. We're gonna have to go to the B flat, which is at the first fret, and then the third fret, which is the C, and the fifth fret, which is D. But you can play this scale over a G major chord. That's what blues players do all the time. They play a G minor, you know, they play a minor pentatonic over a major chord. I mean, you could start transcribing or transferring guitar licks over to the mandolin almost the first hour you're playing the instrument. Okay, so the rest of that scale was fifth fret, then first fret, third fret, fifth fret, and then again, we're not gonna use the open string, we're gonna play the first fret and the fifth, uh, third fret, sorry. And if you wanna reach and get up that B flat, that's at the sixth fret. So this scale doesn't have a lot of open strings, just the bottom two strings are open. Um, but one thing you want to notice, if I take that, if I, is that visualize that shape, if I start here, it's the same. If I start on this G, I can do the same. That's what I'm talking about, the symmetry of having the, the perfect fifths or the fifth tuning where there's no weird interval in the tuning like there is on the guitar, no outlier. Um, things, you can start to unlock all sorts of things. And then once you have a, a scale that isn't using any open strings, um, now you've got a scale that's completely movable. Okay, all right, now let me just show you one more scale. I'm gonna show you the blue scale. So I'm gonna show you the, What's commonly called the blues scale, but it's really kind of a minor pentatonic blues scale, is what I call it. So this would be a G minor pentatonic blues. And we're gonna add, what we're gonna add is we're gonna add this note here, which is a D flat, which is a flat five. So we're gonna have a G, a B flat, a C, a D flat, and then, and then we have the open, and then F and G. Okay, so the way I'm fingering that, basically, I'm playing the open string, and with my first finger, I'm grabbing the third fret, then the fifth fret, then the sixth fret to get that B, uh, that D flat, and then the open D, then third fret, and then fifth fret. And that's the first octave. Okay, and then from there, root, flat third, fourth, flat five, five, and then we're gonna finish off with the first fret, and then the, the third fret to get that F to G. Now it takes a while to kind of get these scales under your fingers. What I would do is just kind of shed them for a while, just play them over and over and over again until you have the major pentatonic down and then get the minor pentatonic down maybe or the major scale. Just kind of play them. I'm gonna show you in another video, I'm gonna show you all these in the key of C and the key of D and maybe the key of A as well. And that would cover most of your major uh, jam keys, okay? All right, so let's talk about bar chords. All right, so bar chords are always one of those things that particularly uh, beginners are kind of like afraid, not afraid to play, but when they try to play, they have zero success. And so they kind of give up. 
Well, the beauty of a bar cord on, on a mandolin is the neck is literally half the width, so you don't have to bar very far to do it. And, and in, in, in standard on a guitar, the two bar forms that we mainly use are the E form bar chord, which looks like an E chord, you're moving up and down the neck, and the A form bar chord. Those are the two main bar chords. Well, for mandolin, I'm gonna say we have two main forms, but it's not those two. It's gonna be the G form and the D form. So we're gonna take our G chord, and we're gonna move it up and down the fretboard. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you major and minor versions of both of these. Okay, so if you visualize this G chord, you can do what I always tell people to do is play it with these three, you know, these three fingers instead of these three fingers to, so that it frees up your first finger to make a bar. And so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna play the two fingers. So we, your G chord was open, open, two, three. We're gonna play those with those, that two, three where we're gonna play with our third and fourth finger like this. And that frees up our first finger. So if I go up two frets and bar my first finger at the second fret, that's an A chord. And I'm gonna give you a tip right now. Okay, if, if you know the notes on your low E chord, low E string, okay, like for playing power chords and stuff like that, and you've learned your low E string, well, it's your E string is right here. So whatever note is on this string is what chord it is. So for example, this is E, F, G, A. Well, this is an A chord. If I go up two more frets, this is a B chord. If I go up one more fret, that's a C note, this is a C chord. Okay, and then here's a D, and here's an E up here. And all I'm doing is I'm taking that G form, and I'm moving it up the fretboard, and noticing whatever note is on my pinky, that's the root of the chord. Also, the first finger is playing the root on the bottom string, on the G string, so you might want to learn the G string at some point. But, and so that's an A, so this is also an A chord. Okay, so this is an A major chord. Well, all I do to make this minor, there's only one third in there. there here's the C sharp right here. If I take this down to there, okay, if I go down one fret, use my second finger. So now I'm playing two, two, three, and five. That's A minor. And the cool thing is if I take off my first finger, I've got that beautiful second. So that's a minor form. So if you want a B minor, boom, right here. And then to A, major, to G, and to the one chord in this key, D. Okay? So now we're on the D chord. So now I want you to play the D chord with these two fingers, like this. So I'm playing two, zero, zero, two. Okay, now the root of the D, D chord is gonna be on the D string. So whatever note that is, that's what chord this is. So if I go up two frets and bar here, that's an E chord. If I go up another fret, that's F, G. So this shape is completely movable. I could do a little Spanish thing, you know, I could go uh, A minor. If you want to make, there's only one third in this D form. Remember, I'm calling this a D form because it looks like the D chord. However you play the D chord, we're going to play with these two, two fingers and move it up. It's the D form. If I take off the pinky and put my second finger down here on the, in this case, the third fret of the first string, the high string, sorry, the high string. I've been calling this the first string. Anyway, the high string. Now that's E minor. Okay, so that's a minor chord. Major, minor. Again, I have that beautiful second if I want to add it. Okay, so I've showed you how to tune the mandolin. I've showed you how to play some basic chords in open position. I've showed you some scales, some G scales and I've showed you how to make bar chords. I've also showed you how to, I've taught you how to fish. I've showed you how to take guitar chords and turn them into mandolin chords just by flipping the bottom four strings upside down. And, and uh, so that's a great trick. Okay, now here's the trick I also promised you. Um, so on the guitar, one of the hardest things to play in a solo or in a fast way is our, our triads. A triad would be um, like for example, um, C, E, G, C, or it's just C, E, G. That's a triad, C, a major triad, C, E, G. 
So on a guitar, you're generally having to play those on three different strings. And so that's where sweep picking comes in. Like guys that can play, uh, players that can play really fast triads are usually sweep picking. And, uh, but on, on mandolin, the cool thing, just like violin, the cool thing is when you're playing triads, it's really more like a, panat a very simple pentatonic lick. So we're gonna put our finger on a C note here. Okay, our first finger's on the third fret of the second string, the second highest string, and that's going to be the C note. Okay, that's the root. The third is up here. I'm gonna grab this at the seventh fret with my third finger, and then the fifth is right here. And then the root is up here, so I'm going 3rd fret, 7th fret, 3rd fret, 8th fret. But it's kind of like a pentatonic loop. And I can just go back and forth. That's almost impossible on guitar, but on mandolin it's super easy. I can make it a 7th chord. Or I, can... I can make it a minor by going 3, 6, 3, 8. That's really cool. So anyway, that's my little trick to show you. And it's just, like I said, it's a lot of fun to suddenly be able to play some triads. It's very symmetrical. So if I can find a G note, I can find a G major triad. A, G, a D note. C note. So whatever note you start on, you just do the same shape and you create a, a, a triad, a major triad, or you can turn it into a minor triad or whatever. So that's one of the things I love about mandolin. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you. If you don't mind, maybe hit that subscription button so you can get notifications um, if, for the next video I post. And um, I'm live streaming most every week. You can check that out too. You can, well, you're totally welcome to join us. I usually have time at the end of the videos to take some questions if you have any. Happy to do that and happy to answer a question if I can. And God bless you. Thank you for watching. <laughs>